Can you? Okay. Just start again. Oh. No, no, just uh, right now, just continue. But just, uh... Okay. Yeah. Sorry for the little interruption there, okay? We're going to do the helix. We're going to do our slice thickness at 5 millimeters, okay? This pitch is kind of like your, um, it's basically helical pitch. How, it's like your slinky. How stretched out or how close it is together. In this case, 0 0.5 to 1 means that there's basically a lot, there's, there's going to be overlap. That's guaranteed overlap. That means every half a slice is going to be kind of overlapping a little bit of the, um, the previous slice you scanned. Um, sure, it gives you, I mean, your resolution, I mean, your image quality details will be pretty good, but I mean, you're just overrating the patient in some cases. 0 0.938 is ideal. This is closest to 1 to 1, meaning there's very minimal overlap. And 1.375 means there's no overlap. In fact, there's some data missing, which the machines could interpolate, meaning fill in the information to reconstruct the, reconstruct the image. But we choose it because of speed here. Um, speed, millimeters per rotation. This is how fast the table can move during the scan. Um, why don't we make it 27.5, okay? Just speed up the machine twice as fast, all right? Interval between, you know, the interval, the gantry tilt, your scan field of view, which in this case is large, because you want to scan the whole field of view. Your KVs here, you have a few stations, 80, 100, 120, 140, okay? And your MA. Okay. Now it's under manual MA. You can also do automatic MA, and if the patient's a little bit big, you can increase your dose index a little bit higher to try to minimize the noise. It's going to compensate to lower the noise. Okay. Auto MA is good. All right. This is your total exposure time. Now, because I said we're doing this with contrast, this is our delay. Um, because just just be, just because of our doctor preference, we actually input like. We can type in a little annotation here, which will be included in all of our images. What kind of contrast you use? In this case, we're going to use OmniPeg, or I say Omni, 350 at 100 milliliters. Okay? Very simple. All right. We don't have an inner scan delay. This is not axial. Um, there's no breath hold. There's no breathe time. This is our voice timer, which is just going to be inspiration. Very simple. And I think we're ready to scan, really. Um, we're not going to worry about reconstructions. I'll say this for a later demonstration. We'll get a little more advanced a little bit later on. So let's hit confirm. Okay, we're pretty happy with what we got here. All right. And let's pan down to the keyboard here. We're going to hit move to scan. I'll pretend that I'm injecting my patient at the same time, but we're going to skip that, okay? All right. So right now I'm waiting for the table to move into position. We're going to start the scan. Okay. Now it's going to wait 55 seconds. Let's say we're injecting the patient. Okay. All right. But for the sake of time, I'm going to skip that. Okay. If if and when you pause it, the timer stops completely. If you hit resume, it completely stops the timer. It's going to be manual. You know, whenever you want to run it. So let's see. Let's scan it right now. Okay. The patient's being scanned at the moment. So the big block is for the thin one is just the interval delay that you've set. Okay? In a few moments, if you look over to the other screen, you can see that our images are coming up. That's our block for our patient. Okay? And the block is disappearing, which is good. Okay. Very good. All right. So here's a trick. Ideally, you want to look through all your images before you let the patient off the table or let them go. But if you must get them off the table quickly, you can do something called priority recon right here. Okay, priority reconstruction, which will show you on the other screen the very last slice scan. Okay, and it just jump to it. It's like, hey, I'll, let's look at the last one really quickly to see where we are. And once it comes up, it'll come up. And that's how you confirm. If, you're, if you see your symphysis pubis, you're good. Okay, and finally, if you're happy with what you got, you hit end exam. And in many cases, what's going to happen is the machine, um, over here, we, it doesn't send automatically, but in many facilities, the machine will send the images automatically to PAX, or, you know, in this case, you could also film it for printing out the film. 
and you do other various things at this point. Or do your reconstructions, okay, which is for going to be used for reformats, um, to make saturated chronal views, you know, this, or even 3D images of volume rendering. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's as, that's as good as it gets. That's as simple as it gets, really. And um, that's it. So, you know, uh, eventually I'll make more videos on more advanced topics like retro reconstruction, reformatting images, and if I really have the guts, I might even do one for, you know, volume rendering. We'll see based on how you actually want to you know, see this. So, I'll leave that to YouTube there. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you.